Hi, Megaly. How are you doing? It's Gary Harrison. My name is not Megaly. My name is Megan. Ho, 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 ho. I accidentally called you Megaly. I'm sure sorry about that. Hey, welcome to our scene on Acromegaly, represented by this guy over here who accidentally called Megan... Megaly! He accidentally called her Megaly, accidentally called Megaly for Acromegaly. So Acromegaly is a condition caused by excess growth hormone in adults. In fact, if you remember, his name was Gary Harrison, and he has this GH in our suit just to help us remember that Acromegaly is caused by an excess of GH. As a side point, when there's excess GH in children, that leads to gigantism. And this excess of GH is typically caused by a pituitary adenoma, but we'll talk about that after. First, let's talk about the symptoms seen in acromegaly, then we'll talk about how diagnosis is made, and at the end we're going to talk about treatment. So let's begin with these symptoms. So you might have noticed that Gary Harrison over here has this interesting tongue. It's a very large tongue, and it's got these deep furrows. This helps us remember that the excess of GH leads to a large tongue with deep furrows. You might have also noticed that he, he had a very deep voice. This helps us remember the deep voice seen in acromegaly. Another thing you might find interesting is his big hands and feet over here. Large hands and feet are another finding. Now, there's this interesting flower coming out of his forehead over here, and that's blossoming. This helps us remember the frontal bosing seen in acromegaly in which there's a large forehead. He's also sweating a lot, as excessive sweating is another finding. Now there's this random blood pressure cuff that he's balancing on his head over here. I don't know why he's doing that. But blood pressure cuff that's high up in our videos represents hypertension. Hypertension is another finding seen in acromegaly. Now you might not have noticed this before, but if you take a look, there's this insect on the floor that he's resistant to. The insect can't get to him because he's resistant to it. Insect resisting for insulin resistance. This occurs because growth hormone, which is the excess hormone which led to the acromegaly, antagonizes the action of insulin. This results in hyperglycemia. If you take a look behind him, you might have noticed these colorectal polyps, as well as the tumor which shows up in our tumor videos. This reminds us of the increased risk of colorectal polyps and cancer seen in acromegaly patients. And finally, we're going to fast forward with age, because we're going to see what happens when this guy ages. All right, now that we spoke about the findings seen in acromegaly, let's talk about how diagnosis is made. And for that, let's take a look at this house over here. You might have noticed these cute giraffes over here. We'll call them the INC giraffes. INC giraffe for IGF. Diagnosis of acromegaly is made with increased level of IGF-1. IGF, or insulin-like growth factor, is going to be increased in acromegaly, and that's because growth hormone tells the body to make IGF. And this IGF is what causes tissues in the body to grow. So again, NC giraffes for IGF. Over here we see this guy. This is actually a growth hormone guy. And he's very excited because he's not being suppressed. He's not being suppressed. This reminds us of the body's failure to suppress serum growth hormone, GH, following oral glucose tolerance test. Normally, GH levels should decrease following the glucose drink. But if it doesn't, that's a sign of acromegaly. Over here, in this MRI picture, we see a pit bull, a pit bull in the MRI. Diagnosis of acromegaly may also be made with a pituitary mass seen on brain MRI. Because as we mentioned, pituitary adenoma can be a cause of acromegaly. Okay, finally, let's talk about treatment. And for that, we need to take a look at this pool over here on the floor. There's this pool over here with these random things. I know these things are extremely random, but they're going to help us remember treatment for acromegaly. So what we see here is the pod, and these letters pod are being held up by three things. Let's explain. Over here we have P held up by a peg, P for peg, and that reminds us of pegvisament, which is a growth hormone receptor antagonist. Of course, if growth hormone is the problem, we want to suppress the production of growth hormone. Next, O is being held by an octopus, O for octopus, and that reminds us of octreotide, which is a somatostatin analog. 
And finally we have D, held up by the dough, or the mean dough, the dough that's mean. Dough that's mean for dopamine. Dopamine agonists, such as cabercoline, can be used to treat acromegaly. And that's because dopamine agonists suppress growth hormone hypersecretion. And as we mentioned, since pituitary adenoma can cause an acromegaly, sometimes a pituitary adenoma resection may be done. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this scene on acromegaly. Please subscribe to the channel and take care.